Hello, everybody. Steve Edelman here. I'm here with my good friend and colleague, Schaefer Bader. We're both endocrinologists at UCSD, and today we're going to talk to you about an extremely important topic, continuous glucose monitoring, specifically in people with type 2 diabetes. For years, CGM has been the standard of care for people with type 1, but we predict, and I want you to timestamp this video, you're going to go back and say we were ahead of our time, that CGM is going to be the standard of care for people with type 2 diabetes. Yeah, that's right, Steve. CGM, what does that stand for? Continuous glucose monitoring. And these are devices, there's a few of them on the market, and we'll just touch on those. But basically, the idea is to continuously get your blood glucose data. And this is really useful for providers. Like as a provider, I love that my patients use these and I get a lot of information from that. But really, we're focused on how these are important for you as a person living with type 2 diabetes and all the information you can get from this sort of continuous glucose monitoring. You know, I, I think as a caregiver, one of the most frustrating things for me is when someone comes in, you say, let me see your logbook and see your finger stick values and there's none or they make them up. Uh, <laughs> and no one likes to prick their fingers yeah. now. It's a pain. It's a real pain. Yeah. And so, but it also gives you a lot more information. One is trend arrows. I mean, it not only gives you a blood sugar like 150 or 250, <laughs> but it tells you which direction your blood sugar is going. Yeah. That gives a lot of information. Yeah. So these, so these continuous glucose monitors are, you know, checking the blood sugar continuously. And really that means every three to five, up to every 15 minutes, but all throughout the day. And they do that through a little body worn sensor. And we'll show you the ones that we're wearing. And then that data gets sent to a, a, either a standalone receiver, kind of like a little device that you can carry like this to look at your blood sugars or to your smartphone in a lot of cases. So there's apps yeah. that you can basically use to, to get that information. And so it's basically your blood glucose at your fingertips at any point in time. And, um, and, and it, it just gives you a lot more information. So you get the blood glucose, you get the trend arrows as your blood sugar going up or down. And it, it gives you the opportunity to kind of look back in time and see, you know, how are your treatments, how are, you know, the things you're doing in your life, your exercise, your diet affecting your blood sugar. What worked and what didn't work. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, and we're not going to get into the nitty gritty of each uh, type of continuous glucose monitor. That's, that's something that we're going to be speaking about uh, on a later conference. Uh, but there's a lot of differences. You know, some you could send the information to a loved one in real time, even if they're halfway around the world, um, and and others have different features. So that's not the purpose of today's Edelman report. So should we uh, yeah. show them a little bit? Yeah. More? So you know, there are a handful of different FDA-approved devices, continuous glucose monitors. Um, one is, you know, the names of the companies like Dexcom, Abbott makes one called Freestyle Libre. They have a couple, Libre 1 and Libre 2. Um, Medtronic has a standalone CGM. Sensionics uh, is a company that's working with Essentia. They have an implantable continuous glucose monitor. Right. And it comes down to personal choice. Yeah. And I think it's all up for you to look at the pros and cons of each one and go for the one that you think will help you the most. Yeah. So Steve wears a Dexcom. Yep. And he's wearing it right now. Yeah. All right. I'm going to show you my show Dexcom. It. Let's see it. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is one place you can wear it. Um, it's approved to wear on your abdomen. You know, I'm wearing a Freestyle Libre. It's one of the other you know CGM devices. This is the sensor, right? So I have it right here on my arm, and um, this is basically a little sticker and a tiny little sensor sitting right under the skin, and that's what's actually reading. The, the glucose values. Yeah. And that's and, all it is. You just wear this around. And for me, uh, you can get your readings either um, on a monitor, mm -hmm. standalone monitor, or you could be really cool and show your friends, uh, you know, that you can see your numbers on your cell phone. Yeah, sweet. And, and, with, and with the Freestyle um, 1 or 2, you have this little reader, basically, and you just scan it. It beeps, and then your blood sugar pops up right on this reader. Um, so it's just kind of, you know, anytime you want, you can check it. It doesn't require, you know, doing a finger stick. Um, and, and so basically available to you at all times. And we should say that uh, these sensors have uh, auto inserters. This is what it looks like when it comes in a package. You know, good for type 1s, type 2s. And you push a button and it inserts it for yeah. you. 
And, and, and you know, these, they, 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 this is the, the one from the device that I'm wearing. It just pops right on there. You click it and it sticks it in. So easy. And you wear these for anywhere between 10 and 14 days. So it's not that frequent really that you're changing these out. Putting them on, it doesn't hurt. It, it hurts less than probably a finger stick. And then it's on there and you're good to go. Yeah. You can check your blood sugar all the time. Both these sensors do not require finger sticks. So we hate pricks uh, and right. most people do. Yeah. Uh, just think about that. You not only get 288 measurements a day, but you don't have to prick your finger. Yeah. And so, so what do we do with all this information? Yeah. I mean, I think yeah. that's the, that's the next big question. It. And sometimes people feel almost overwhelmed by the idea of knowing what their blood sugar is doing, but it really is an empowering yeah. um, um, piece of information. And it really, it, it's allow you, the person with diabetes, to make decisions that you want to make to be healthier. Absolutely. And we're going to talk about CGM for type 2s, all type 2s. Now, right now, the low-hanging fruit is for people with type 2 diabetes that are on three or more injections a day or on an insulin pump. And these folks can get their CGM approved by Medicare and most insurance companies. Yeah. Most. Uh, and, you know, it, it's the benefits in people on multiple daily injections or a pump are the same in type ones like myself. I'm on a pump and you can download the data. Mm -hmm. um, some, some of these CGMs communicate with pumps uh, so that the pump can actually give you insulin automatically. Yeah. And so this is the obvious group of people yeah. that can help. And in this group, people who are doing, you know, using multiple shots of insulin or on an insulin pump, you're using that information from the CGM to make insulin dosing decisions all throughout the day. And really importantly, the CGM helps protect against hypoglycemia. And it can help you find um, instances where your blood sugar is going low and you may not have even known it, which is actually really common. So yeah. we miss that a lot of times, low blood sugars overnight or throughout the day, and we don't even know it's happening necessarily. Sometimes people have those without even noticing, without symptoms. Yeah. And those can be dangerous. You're so, right. So, so the safety um, part of this is really important, especially if you're on insulin. Yeah, so I mean, there's all kinds of things to talk about CGM, where to put your alert settings, but we were just talking about the incidence of severe hypoglycemia in adults with type two. So now let's go, let's go down to the other groups. What about people taking oral medications and a basal insulin at night? Yeah, and that insulin, you know, insulin's a great medicine. We use it all the time. But if you're on any type of insulin, even just a once daily insulin or a basal insulin, there's still some risk of hypoglycemia. And so, you know, being able to monitor your blood sugar overnight or to be able to wake up in the morning and scan your blood sugar and see what happened overnight, I think is really useful. Yeah. And it can help guide deciding how much of that insulin you really need to be on to get the right dose. You're, you're, you're saying exactly what I'm thinking. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. You know what? When we give a patient basal insulin, whether you take in the morning or at night, one of the biggest pitfalls is you're not titrating to the correct dose. Mm -hmm. And then you can give yourself too much, you can give yourself too little. It's so easy to adjust your basal insulin, whether your doctor has told you to do your own self-adjustment or when you periodically check in with him or her. Mm -hmm. That's right. And so, and that's what, so patients with type 2 diabetes taking insulin once a day. What about people with type 2 diabetes who are on no insulin at all? Let's see, maybe you're just on oral medications or a GLP-1 medication. Yeah, you know what? I mean, there are many fuddy-duddy doctors out there that may say, you don't need one then because you're not going to increase or decrease your dose of oral medication or your GLP-1 on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. But I think we can also lump the pre-diabetes into this group mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that, you know, you can do tremendous, uh, what we call non-pharmacologic management of your diabetes, whether it's the type of exercise, the duration of exercise, the types of food, the amount of food, uh, and the timing of the food all together, these things can help you keep your blood sugars in a tight range, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 70 to 180. That's what it's all about, time and range. And so that's, it's, yeah. it's extremely important information. I think that real-time feedback is, is, is so essential because you can really see, hey, if I go and I go on a walk for half an hour, you know, how does that actually affect my blood sugar? You may see a really significant improvement in real time. And there's no way to really get that information from your A1C yeah. or even it's hard to do with, with pricking your finger all day long. Yeah, and you know what? I've, I've had so many patients, and you have too, that come back and say, this CGM changed my life. Totally. 
It gets people engaged. Yeah. Because a lot of you folks with type Q, you don't feel that bad when your blood sugars are extremely high. Yeah. And we know that many of you are poorly adherent with your medications. Uh, not, not you, but you. And um, <laughs> you can see what happens when you don't take your medication. And we're not trying to, uh, you know, browbeat anybody. Mm -mm. Because, but when you have type two, it's tough because it's it's many of the issues in type two are asymptomatic, yeah. including glucose, blood pressure, cholesterol, and you have to take a ton of medication. So this is an invaluable technology. So I would say this: what what would you say to a patient that said, "My doctor doesn't believe in it"? Well, uh, I think you maybe show the doctor this video as a way to introduce them. I mean, that there really are a lot of important uses of this and there's a lot of data to support it. So I think, you know, this is becoming a, a more and more, you know, widely used in type 2 diabetes. There really is good evidence for it and we're not going to get into this, but if you need research there, studies, there, they're is. out there. There is. And so, and so I think it's important to, to kind of, and it may be you who's doing it, actually bringing this information, you know, and this thought process to your provider. So the first step is try to um, expand their, and their the thinking rest a little is, bit. <laughs> practice, practice, get your middle finger warmed up, you know, stretch it out, get it ready. And it's not like, not, this isn't possible for anyone, but maybe, you know, hey, if you're really hitting a lot of roadblocks, maybe it's time to look for a different provider who's yeah. a little more up to date on yeah. some of these options for people. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. Uh, what about, what about coverage issues? We talked about, you know, when it can be covered. What about on people who it's not covered yet because insurance hasn't covered it for yeah. all type people with type two? Yeah, it's frustrating. It's yeah. it, most of the time it's not covered, but I would encourage all of you to do anything you can to get one. Now you could buy one yourself and you could shop around mm -hmm. Walmart. Uh, you need a prescription. Um, and I would encourage you to check out some of the links you're seeing on the screen and on our website for resources. Yeah. Uh, some of these companies have one month free trial with it. And if you like it, you could you could buy one yourself. You don't have to use it 24 seven. You might do it for two weeks. Yeah, you're gonna learn a lot in that time period. You can lose a ton. And yeah. I can tell you what, most people that say I'm gonna wear it for two weeks that love it, then they, they don't wanna- Yeah, they keep using it. They keep using yeah. it. Yeah, so I'd say do whatever you can to get one. And unfortunately, if you're on orals only or pre-diabetic or even just on basal, it might be tough to get one from your insurance company. Yeah. But I, I, I swear it will change your life. Yep. Enough that's, said. That's it, Schaefer. Yeah. Thanks, Steve. Hey, we're vaccinated. <laughs> so long, Nation. Yep. Thanks, guys.